So the January 31st, 2018 issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association Cardiology Focus was quite profound and certainly controversial in publishing the review meta-analysis article on the effects of omega-3 fatty acids in cardiovascular disease prevention. And it's created quite a stir. In fact, uh, of all the kind of nutrition articles that have been published over the last few months, this one has certainly generated the most interesting input and controversy. The title of the article is Associations of Omega-3 Fatty Acid Supplement Use with Cardiovascular Disease Risk, and it is a meta-analysis of 10 trials that were chosen out of the literally hundreds of different clinical studies have been done of differing sizes on omega-3 fatty acid supplementation. This, uh, these 10 trials, which had to meet certain criteria, including uh, they had to have at least 500 uh, subjects in the trial, they had to go on for at least three years, and the majority of them, eight out of the 10, actually were placebo-controlled. And the total number of individuals included in these 10 trials was 77,917. So it's a fairly large number of individuals. Again, I want to emphasize, this is a meta-analysis of these 10 clinical trials that were kind of chosen out of the, uh, the wide array of different studies that have been done over many years in the intervention in humans with omega-3 fatty acids. The results, as you know, came out quite uh, controversial. The results were, and I quote, the meta-analysis demonstrated that omega-3 fatty acids had no significant association with fatal or non-fatal coronary uh, heart disease uh, or any major vascular events. It provides no support uh, for current recommendations for the use of such supplements in people with a history of uh, coronary artery disease. So this uh, kind of flew in the face of a lot of the previous thoughts that we got from clinical trials and studies, and uh, it really created quite a stir. And, and those of us who have been in this field a number of uh, years, in my case, uh, nearly four decades, you know that you see the pendulum swinging back and forth whenever there's something that uh, becomes a bandwagon and everyone seems to agree with it you know, in the nutritional uh, area, then suddenly, boom, there's a, <laughs> a new bit of information, the pendulum swings back, and there's an overreaction. So what is the actual thought that we would take away from this trial? And I really want to, to uh, compliment um, uh, Dr. Alex Vasquez for his extraordinary uh, and in-depth uh, evaluation of this trial, uh, the methodologies and the, uh, uh, the inclusion criteria and the uh, various statistical analyses that were used in the conclusion of this JAMA cardiology uh, article. Uh, I think Dr. Vasquez and we will be presenting, uh, him providing a, a, a website that you can uh, tap into his own analysis. He's done a video blog on this, but I wanted to comment a little bit from my perspective. Uh, Dr. Uh, Vasquez brings up uh, two important uh, features of this uh, meta-analysis, I believe. Uh, he's actually got five different points uh, uh, that he has raised questions, but I think two of those for me are quite uh, prominent. Number one is uh, what is the effective dose that one would use of omega-3 fatty acid supplementation and a mixture of EPA and DHA for individuals that have an uh, existing history or high risk to cardiovascular or vascular disease? Um, and that's a question that we can get some informative uh, input into from studies that have been published over the last many years. Um, and using such tools, as Dr. Vasquez points out, like the um, uh, omega-3 fatty acid index, the so-called uh, uh, omega quant index, which is a measurement of the amount of incorporation of omega-3 fatty acids uh, into uh, uh, blood membranes, or red blood cell membranes. And generally, we would like that number, uh, based on statistical data that's been presented over the years of low uh, vascular risk individuals, to be somewhere in the 8 to 10 percent range of their overall fats in their membranes to be omega-3 fats. And what you generally find in people in high-risk situations is their omega-3 fats in their red cell membranes are, are much lower, um, 2 to 3 percent. And uh, these are individuals with much higher relative risk. And so what we really use the, the omega-3 quant index for is kind of uh, determining the level of uh, physiological uh, reserves of these omega-3 fatty acids, which tells you a little bit about their status. And in general, what it's been found is that uh, to get a uh, omega quant omega fatty acid level up into that 8 to 10 percent level, you need somewhere around 1,800 milligrams a day of uh, 
of omega-3 uh, EPA and DHA, knowing that DHA is probably um, better in terms of erasing the, the omega quant index and EPA, but a, a, some kind of a balance between the two, um, maybe slightly favoring DHA, uh, uh, summing out to be 1800 milligrams or more. So if that becomes a criteria for therapeutic benefit, or let's call it physiological benefit, then what were the levels of um, omega-3 fatty acids that were used in these eight, uh, excuse me, these 10 studies that were chosen uh, as part of this meta-analysis uh, that included the 77,917 individuals. And there's where the story gets quite in, uh, interesting because it turns out that um, only three of the studies uh, actually used levels of uh, EPA DHA supplementation that were at or above uh, the 1800 milligram total uh, daily dose. Uh, the others were really, uh, in this threshold, were underdosing uh, doses that were uh, anywhere between 500 total milligrams to 1,000 total milligrams, but a short of the 1,800 milligram threshold, which seems to be uh, very important for uh, determining the uh, appropriate amount of uh, omega-3s for physiological benefit. So when I went to the uh, literature and I actually looked at these three uh, trials of the 10 that had the appropriate uh, levels, the 1,800 or more milligrams, it was very interesting. Uh, these include, uh, and I'm going to use abbreviations, the uh, JELES trial, J-E-L-E-S, that was published actually in The Lancet in 2007 uh, um, in volume 369, page 1090. Uh, that was a randomized, open-label, blinded, in-point analysis trial that used more than 1,800 milligrams of total omega-3 fatties a, a day. Uh, the next of the three trials um, uh, was a trial that uh, was called the uh, DOIT, D-O-I-T trial, and uh, it was a randomized clinical trial on omega-3 fatty acids uh, and the all-cause mortality in elderly men at high cardiovascular risk. Uh, this was published in the European Journal of Cardiovascular Prevention and Rehabilitation in 2010. And the third was the Italian study, the so-called uh, GISI uh, HF trial, uh, which was uh, the results were published in 2008 in the, uh, in the Lancet. Those were the three of the 10 trials that used the uh, appropriate dose to get into what might be considered the appropriate incorporation levels in the 8-10% uh, EPA levels, DHA levels in the, in the body. And what did we find as the outcome of those three trials? They were all positive. Uh, uh, admittedly, the positive effect in prevention of cardiovascular disease uh, was, was small, anywhere between a 9% reduction up to a 20% reduction, but statistically uh, significant nonetheless in these trials, suggesting a marginal benefit of, uh, of value in cardiovascular prevention uh, by supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids. So why did the, uh, the JAMA cardiology study then come up with saying no value? And it's because the other seven trials, which were not dosed properly, uh, were trials that had uh, no clinically significant, no statistically significant benefit. So they diluted, obviously, when included with the three trials that did have benefit, the, uh, uh, the, the signal of value that were seen with the three positive trials that were done correctly and made the overall aggregate of the 10 trials then uh, not reach the level of significance. So the JAMA cardiology paper concludes no benefit. So I think there are many different takeaways from this uh, as it relates to study design, interpretation, inclusion in a meta-analysis study. Um, I won't get into all the details, but suffice it to say that the data actually shows that if the study is done correctly with the right level of inter intervention, uh, that in fact there is a positive outcome and a, maybe you would call it small, but still statistically significant uh, benefit in prevention, preventing reoccurrence of uh, cardiovascular disease or other serious uh, sequelae, including all-cause mortality, I might add. So uh, just a note as it relates to some of the negative press and the negative news that's coming out around omega-3 fatty acids, it's really more in the details of looking at these studies and not just taking at face value some uh, author's interpretation. Thanks so much. Hope this helps.